Is the moon there when nobody is looking at it? That is the question that Albert Einstein asked and he was unhappy with the answer. According to the Copenhagen interpretation, a quantum object like the moon is simultaneously in several distinct states of probabilities until it's observed by a conscious observer. Now it begs the question, what constitutes a conscious observer? And that has been the question for the ages, the question for physicists. There are even some physicists who have asked the question, could there be some sort of universal conscious observer? But a lot of them don't like that question because it starts to play into the category of intelligent design. Now, in the video that I posted two videos ago, there was one of the streams of consciousness videos where I was just kind of talking and I said that consciousness is the God part. It just sort of came out of my mouth. It sounded nice, but I thought, what do I mean by that? And so I searched it and lo and behold, there was something there. First things first, why is the God particle actually called the God particle? Well, initially it was actually called the goddamn particle because it was goddamn difficult to find. I'm not making that up. It is better known as the Higgs boson particle, which is the fundamental force carrying particle of the Higgs field. Now the Higgs field is defined as an invisible universe wide field that gives mass to all matter, forcing particles to coalesce into stars, planets, and pretty much everything you see in the universe. Now, I don't know about you, but when I read that, I began to think, well, that kind of sounds like a wave function being collapsed. If this field of energy is taking essentially things that exist like waves and then imparting mass into them, it sounds like this field, this energy is collapsing a wave function. Sounds to me like exactly what a conscious observer is said to do. Google the observer effect really quickly. I don't know about you, but that sounds like an intelligence to me. Kind of took me down a little rabbit hole when I started looking up articles that supported this idea of whether or not the universe itself could be conscious, intelligent, sentient. And I actually found quite a few articles. Some were saying planets themselves could actually be intelligent, sentient. The whole world, the whole universe seems to be teeming with intelligent life, with consciousness. It's just some of us don't want to accept that simply because it doesn't fit into the sort of box of what we think intelligence should look like or what form we think intelligence should take. But that brings me back to my original point. Could these fields, including gravity, nuclear force field, the Higgs field, and the electromagnetic field, could they be a collective of consciousness? Could these fields be sentient? And could they be the sentient force responsible for collapsing the wave function of the reality that we are presently experiencing? If the field itself is sentient, then that is the ultimate observer. For more information on this, you should look into the integrated information theory, which is a form of or offshoot of panpsychism that suggests that everything with a goal is essentially conscious. And no, not tables or my camera or my phone, although sometimes I wonder about my phone, but plants, animals, planets, galaxies, and whole universes as well. I think it's a bit closed-minded and ignorant of us to assume that we are the pinnacle of intelligence and we are the pinnacle of consciousness. There are some uh, neuroscientists who think that the interface between the mind and the brain is not just electromagnetic fields acting as an interface, but they think that the electromagnetic fields in the brain actually are conscious, that that is the basis of consciousness. John J. McFadden, for example, has proposed that that's the electromagnetic field theory of consciousness. And Todd Murphy, a Canadian neuroscientist, has proposed the magnetic field theory of consciousness, that these fields are the, the basis of consciousness. Well, if we take those theories seriously and apply them to the whole universe, the universe is pervaded by the gravitational field and the electromagnetic field. Um, and um, therefore, a mind that could interact with that would know everything in the universe because it would be the basis of where, where everything is and how everything, its activity. There'd be an instant method for omniscience.